What's up guys, Barry Gaming here, back with some more Idle Heroes, and today we're kind of doing an updated video to something that we've done in the past, and that is kind of a guide on the order to build Transcendence Heroes. Now we're not going to go way down the line like we have before going through all the heroes, we're going to mainly talk about like the first three heroes, because as you guys know, the traditional way to go is you build your Sword Flash, you then build Scarlet Queen Halora, and then you build a Jara if and when you have all of your artifacts ready to go for Vortex pushes. That's still a valid strategy, but uh, if you have built an Eloise on your account as your first E5 hero, there might be a better way to go about building Transcendence Heroes. So we're going to talk about that today. Hopefully you guys enjoy this one. Let me know what you guys think about this down below as well. Hit that subscribe button. Let's jump right into it. So just to reiterate, this original method is still a perfectly valid way to go, especially if on your account you haven't built, say, like an Eloise as your first E5 or even like one of your top E5 heroes. Maybe you built a Tix or an Ithaqua or something like that in the Shadow Faction and you went for a more direct route. Uh, of damage building sword flash would still be your number one priority so those of you guys who just came back to the game you're looking at building your first e e5 hero and then of course your first transcendence hero shia is still a good option uh, i would say if you don't have an eloise on your account she is absolutely amazing her damage her single target damage is amazing if you do build a sword flash as your first transcendence hero please make sure you have a maxed out Drake on your account too. Drake's defense down is the reason why Sword Flash is so strong. A lot of you guys that are doing Void Campaign will realize Sword Flash really isn't that good in Void Campaign. You want to know why she's not good there but amazing everywhere else? Because this guy is not allowed in the Void Campaign because he's not a Transcendence Hero. Uh, but... If you're still looking to get through Vortex, get all the way up through Vanquisher, even Dominator, because you can still use the Sword Flash Drake combo all the way through Dominator mode, it works. Uh, and making Sword Flash Shia your main householder will be the positive, the best way to go as well when we're talking about your Cloud Island. So still a valid method. If you go for a Sword Flash Shia, I would highly suggest going for Scarlet Queen Halora as your second hero because you're really looking to boost the damage of your sword flash and scarlet queen halor is one of the best ones to support that damage mainly because of a royal guard passive ability this is increasing all damage dealt to her entire team which is amazing plus of course they have that extra ping damage sword flash does a lot of ping damage with this queen's guard because it's 800 percent of her attack not queen's attack when queen gets hit so it ends up being a lot of damage. A lot of times you can get kills off of this counterattack, let alone she has her own counterattack as well, which is just absolutely amazing. All of her skills are made for main, just single target damage, and that's how you get it done. Now, if you did go for this method, you did go for a sword flash first, you then went for a queen second, because of course, queen is one of the easiest heroes to get to C lane 25. Uh, the main reason you want to get the sea lane 25 is because of food generation. You're going to be getting a uh, hundred four star hero shards per smash. And of course you're going to be getting these, uh, these bonus boxes giving you even more cloud Island materials for boosting up your tenants and all that fun stuff. So very important to get to at least like 25. Of course, if you can push further in a faction, that is cool. That would be great and all. Definitely a plus, uh, but getting queen past, say, like 25 is a little difficult, even with like a full lineup behind her. Maybe when we get another Abyss Transcendence here, it'll become easier, but getting to 25, it's pretty simple. You just need her and an Ignis, really, with a couple baby Ignis, you can get it done, which is why building her second is such a good thing. Now, when you go that route with Sword Flash and Queen, there's two different options. Of course, one option is you need to make sure you have all your artifacts that you need. And uh, if you don't have the artifacts you need, that's when it becomes a little tricky. 
in order to push Vortex with that style team. The third Transcendence hero you will want is a Starwing Jara. But first, before you even do that, you're going to need at least a Glittery or higher Rui Scepter for reliability on the CC. And you're going to need a total of eight Demon Bells. That way you can make... Uh, a bunch of I think it's like one radiant and two glittery demon bells for an energy feed setup and you're not going to want to make Jara your main household you're going to want other heroes faster than Jara to feed energy to Jara so she gets that round one active if you do not have the required resources in that route I would not go for Jara as your third transcendence hero some people might get transcendence heroes faster than they get artifacts if that's the case and you can't get this amazing active going off round one jara is not your pick you know who is the pick then typically fairy queen vest because she is just downright hands down the best supporter in the game and honestly i think one of the best heroes in the game um jara is quickly becoming one of the most important but if you don't have the artifacts and set up to support jara vesa is a very nice plug and play hero her abilities just give you so much survivability and versatility on your team that is what i would go with vesta the third and then probably when you get the artifacts build the jara fourth or fifth whenever you get those artifacts now i want to talk about the new route that a lot of people are taking if you're like me on my free to play account you built Eloise as your first E5 hero, or even second or third, if it's the shadow hero you pick. Because, of course, you kind of want to stick to one hero in every faction. Uh, if you built Eloise, Eloise is going to be your main householder on Cloud Island as soon as you get a V4 hero. She is very strong, and she's going to be able to help you push through Void Vortex. Now, you guys might be wondering, Barry, you just talked about Void Vortex with the other setup. Why are we still talking about with this setup too? Well, you still want to try to get as far as possible in Vortex because this is going to be getting you, you want to try to get through at least the fire very quickly. It's going to be getting you a lot of Crystals of Transcendence two times a week, as well as Stellar Shards and those toolboxes. There's a lot of really important things getting the Vanquisher to start powering up your account and of course getting Transcendence Heroes even faster if you're not pushing vortex you're not getting transcendence heroes as fast as the competition so again if you went with an eloise as your first e5 hero you're going to want to build vesa as your first transcendence hero to support her uh, she is going to help keep the eloise alive longer which means more counter attacks which means more scarred souls which means more damage being dished out uh, it's hands down one of the best ways to build this now again we're gonna probably have artifact issues that early on in the game you're not gonna have all the demon bells yet you're not gonna have everything you need so there's two different routes you can take here I would personally go for uh, Mystic Fairy Freya as your second Transcendence hero, mainly because with the two of them, they can push Sealand a lot easier. Vest is very strong, but when you add in these, uh, these, where is it? It's not that one there. Is it in, where is it listed? There it is, Mirage Pollen. This Mirage Pollen can really help the survivability of your team in just about any game mode because it gives all your heroes essentially a chance to dodge. Now, it doesn't work on boss targets, so even in Sealand, it won't work on that big boss guy, but all the little minions, it will work on. So I think they're a very solid combo. Mystic Fairy Freya by herself isn't that great. She's not that amazing, but when paired with like Vesa, it is a lethal combination. Then what I would say is as your third Transcendence Hero, again, consider building Star Wing Jara. But if you have the Eloise, you have the Vesa, you don't really need the Sword Flash anymore. Another option could be for your third pick would be Scarlet Queen Halora. If for some reason you don't have uh, all your heroes, you don't have all your artifacts ready to go. So what I would mainly say is if you're going the route of Eloise as your first householder with Vesa as your first transcendence, what you want to focus on building support heroes around is coming into here, taking a look at this list here and checking out Eloise. You're going to want to try to build heroes that help support her. So build either an Amon Ra or a Carry, uh, maybe a Tix or an Annabelle for support. Mim is definitely a no. Maybe Augustin. It, it, she doesn't have the best heroes for householders. So if you do build them, 
plan on not keeping them. You will swap them out eventually to other heroes. Ithka was a nice pickup because she's great at damage. Flora's really good one to build because Flora will also double as a uh, tenant right here for a Vesta. So even though Flora's not going to do much for your account, she's definitely going to help you down the road. So in all honesty, I'd probably build like another Freya. Even if I had a Mystic Fairy Freya, I would build another Freya and a Flora because those are going to double right here as householders. So very, very important. Uh, and as you can see, if you do go the Mystic Fairy Freya route as well, she's going to be a support here, here, here. You're going to want a Rogan on your account no matter what. So that's all your householders for or all your tenants for your Vesa when you do want to swap all that power over is going to work out pretty well. So hopefully it helps you guys decide a little bit more what you want to go for as a Transcendence Hero build order. Vesa, I feel like, is the new hotness. She's just, she does the answers. And of course, Void Campaign, she's a hundred times better than Sword Flash. So let me know what you guys think about it down below. Uh, very interesting strategy. I'll see you guys next time.